my goodness. Wow. That just got so dramatic out of nowhere. <laughs> I had a few requests in my last video to react to different people, and I decided to go with Henry Kidman, who was requested by Dre Took This. Thanks for commenting. Anyway, I'm going to be breaking down the editing to this from an editor's perspective and point out different effects, pacing, structure, and all that stuff that has to do with editing in general. So I'll be looking at... So now that we understand that, let's check it out. Ah, oh, hey YouTube. I built a glam bot. <sighs> well, if I'm being really honest with myself, built's probably the wrong word. It was more like a threat, but as it turns out, it's not very sustainable. So I'm gonna actually huh. make one. Just so we're all on the same page, Glambot is the name given to the robotic arm and slow motion camera often seen on those fancy red carpets. Its value, just shy of a million dollars. My budget on the other hand, comes in just shy of zero. So if we want to do this ourselves, we're going to have to cut some pretty serious corners while somehow not sacrificing the quality of the shot. But how on earth is that going to be possible? How am I, a wildly unqualified, albeit beautifully polite young man, going to be able to create a robotic arm that is as good as one an industry has spent years, dare I say decades, invested millions in designing, refining, redesigning? How am I going to be able to create a robotic arm to compete with that? Sorry about before, I think... Okay, wow, okay. <laughs> there's a lot more, uh, there's a lot more with that with the editing that I was thinking. So already within the first 10 seconds, we have an immediate statement that is one proving the title of the video and the whole purpose of the video, showing you what it is. And he says what he did, which intrigues you to wanna watch and see how he did it. Simple YouTube stuff. I built a glam bot. But as far as the editing goes is it's, silent for a second or two and then the beat really kicks in and so it kind of kind of punches you with with catching your attention because the beat jumps in and really picks up the pacing as soon as you click on the video <sighs> and of course it goes silent it kind of it's a little bit of a stinger with the music and then it goes silent with the whole pause thing. But something really interesting that I want to cover here. Oh, if I'm being really honest with myself, built's probably the wrong word. It was more like a threat, but as it turns out, it's not very sustainable. So I'm going to actually make one. So you got this freeze frame shot after he cuts to the other scene where uh, you got his girlfriend and then like friends or whatever standing completely still. Now, there are different ways you can make this. I think because they're holding one of them above the flame, which is obviously edited in, it's not real. Uh, because they're holding her up like that, it's hard to kind of stay still other than, I'm actually, thinking either they took the pictures, right, holding up and then froze that and cut it out and tracked it uh, with the movement because you'll see as it's moving behind it, there's a little bit of a separation. It's not like it's just stamped on the thing. There's a little bit of a separation because the background's moving away from the actual picture. And I'm kind of, I'm interested in seeing how this is done. Either they cut out different parts and then tracked it like that. They make one. Yeah, that has to be what they did. But like what I'm paying attention to is the feet is like in the grass and it's got, so that's, that's pretty impressive with how they did it. And I don't know if I'm overcomplicating it more than it is, but from what I think how it could have been done is something like that. Uh, but then another small thing, which is also 3D tracked, is the fire particles that are going on. Very subtle, but gives it that depth and, and makes it look, you know, pretty sick with what's going on. How on earth is that going to be possible? And then which I've seen this before, but it seems like he recorded the voice over on top of the shot of him walking on the beach because it does seem a little bit separated. He probably recorded the clip from, it's from a drone and then just recorded the voiceover later on so that the audio is nice and crisp. 
whenever he's obviously outside. Years, dare I say decades, invested millions in designing, refining, redesigning. How am I gonna be able to create a robot? And then another thing you'll notice towards the end here, the music does a very good job. He's trying to give that level of suspense and explain what's going on and the difficulty of it. And he does a really good job of, of raising the tension or suspense throughout this minute because of the music and the way everything's cut and built Built up, you'll notice when the music starts to get more tense, the cuts will be faster between B-roll and also the way he's speaking is a bit quicker and then he starts running in the shot visually showing you the pace is being really brought up. Sorry about before, I think you got a little carried away there because I don't even think that I need to build a robotic arm, and I'll show you what I mean. Let's take a closer look at the shot from the Glambot that we actually want to recreate. If we track the camera, we can then see that the robotic arm is actually moving that camera in a reasonably straight line. And that might be our first cuttable corner. Because as Which, yeah, those, those, uh, those videos are pretty sick. With the whole slow motion, stuff like that. I've seen a few of those. So let's see how he does it. Cool as that robotic arm is, it doesn't really seem like it offers any foundational advantages that we couldn't achieve in a different and potentially simpler way, and we can prove it. Let's construct a replica 3D scene. Instead of using the Glambot's originally curved trajectory, let's constrain the camera so that it can only move in a straight line. And look at that, the shot looks super similar despite using a far simpler mechanism. So why don't we just ditch the robotic arm entirely and instead build something much simpler like a really big, really fast camera slider? Now don't get me wrong, that idea absolutely has its drawbacks, not the least of which is being able to see the rail in parts of the shot, but we've just proven it's perfectly capable of getting a very similar shot and the huge benefit is that there is a chance that I'll be able to build it. There is basically zero chance that I'd be able to build a robotic arm to do what we needed to do. So really big camera slider sounds like a great plan. All right, so he took this other minute to go more in depth on explaining and we're officially getting into the structure of the overall process of making the, the objective of this project. So, we, you know, we've got some simple explanation type of graphics. You know, you've got the paper cutouts, different slide in, slide out, stuff like that, different animations. Uh, nothing too, too crazy when it comes to the editing. The music is pretty good when it comes to just being a simple beat to go over the explanation. And it flows nicely into the other track or or section with the music because it's kind of like an instrumental and then it goes into the actual song. And then also you got some animations here. It looks like there's some type of wave type of thing to the drawings or whatever that, it, it looks like there's some effect over top of it that's tracked in these animations that, you know, obviously gives it its own style. And I wonder if he's gonna keep that up throughout the project because those are subtle small things that, that you pay attention to, but yeah. I mean, nothing too crazy. On to step one. Coming on to the ladder day we got to make up the frame for the camera slider, I salvaged four of these two meter long shower curtain rails out of this pot at the back of this like big warehouse thing. Boonings. Hmm. I then joined them all together using some laser cut MDF and 3D printed parts. For the gantry, I 3D printed some housings and made some crude but pretty functional linear bearings. I then joined these all together using more MDF. Now we need a way to move the gantry. Most normal sized camera sliders use a stepper motor like this because they're cheap, precise, and they're powerful right. enough. But there isn't much normal about the camera slider that we're making. So I got the biggest stepper motor I could find. After 3D printing some mounts, some pulleys, and a tensioner for the belt, it was time to test it out. Now it may not look like it, but that is a pretty promising start. But we are going to have to go much faster and it appears that we are at the edge of what the stepper motor can handle. But can we really blame the stepper motor for this? No, because the problem is me. What? Or more specifically, very small versions of myself. Well, you okay. All right, yeah, that was pretty sick. The overall structure behind it, something that I do want to point out, the fact that it doesn't seem like there's any boring moments. It's the pacing of the process is moving at a pretty good pace where you're not just kind of just sitting there like, all right, get on, get on with it, you know? So, and then obviously throughout here, 
he'll show some clips of from the camera from the slider and like the process you'll see that it's a little bit shaky right now obviously he hasn't perfected it but the music you know, I, I want to talk about that as well cuts out and then it kind of goes into another section he shows the the fault of the slider and how it's not working well because it obviously stopped and then it cuts his voiceover picks up and goes into the next section explaining that he needs to fix it oh, okay. but we are going to have to go much faster and it appears that we are at the edge of what the stepper motor can handle but can we really blame the stepper motor for this and then you got this shot he probably filmed it on green screen most likely and then i mean simply just keyed out the green screen and then shrunk <laughs> the scale down on him and put it there. It's a still shot, so you don't have to do any tracking or anything, but there is a subtle shadow. He just put a shadow and did it in the same direction as everything else in the shot when it comes to the lighting. You'll be shocked how much shadows and lighting and stuff really helps with, with effects and making sure it matches the environment. And then halfway through, it seems like if you play this back replay slow-mo if you play this back in slow motion it seems like he just scaled up a different shot and it has motion blur over top of it so it blends in together for the most part and then that's what gives you that other angle that's close up of the camera kind of looking down at his feet continuing on a micro henry is a unit used to measure electrical inductance which put hmm. very simply is something i am nowhere near qualified enough to lecture you on so here's my musician brother josh to explain what is inductance i don't know uh -huh. bugger well i guess you're just gonna have to trust me that this is the solution look at the size of that this is a servo motor and unlike its stepper counterparts it's able to retain so much more of its torque up to a much higher rp is that staying alive a, a cover of Stand Alive in the background. Again, and it still has the positional control. This specific servo motor came from a company called Technic, and I want to give a shout out to Nick who works at Technic because he was so helpful with just whatever question I have, even things that weren't related to servo motors. And I don't have any affiliation with the brand, but I do just want to say thank you, Nick. Now, this has six horsepower and up to 25 Newton meters of torque. If this were powering a boat in the state of Tasmania, you would need a license to drive it. Oh. Oh, it's beautiful though. Now to get that puppy on the slider. Man. Yep. Well, I guess that shower curtain rails and MDF are not the best materials. For he did it again. He did it again. There's some effects in here that that's kind of just B-roll-ish type of effects. And I've definitely had my fair share of putting together these types of graphics and, and stuff like that while editing. But there's a highlight here that is, I've actually done this before as well. It, it's separated from the, the screen or however you want to say paper, whatever. It's highlighted. And so to kind of give it that effect, I can see here there's, there's some type of like film grain or noise over top and the rest is blurred out. And obviously you'll notice the way it's tracked, it's separated. So while the background and everything is moving at the same pace, you'll see it start to cut off different different parts of what's behind it, like the letter A and, and different stuff like that, which gives you that depth when watching it. It's a pretty cool effect. I mean, the shot where it's Google Earth shown from the top back, it's just a simple transition with blur over it that's that rotates as well Man. and then of course once again he's showing the f the faulty part of what he's building with the music completely cut just showing what's wrong with it and then he picks it back up with another track explaining that he's to work more on it i wonder how many times he's going to do that i wonder if there's a there's a thing going on here Let's find out. Well, I guess that shower curtain rails and MDF are not the best materials for building a camera slider out of. Who would have guessed? Well, good news, the motor has more than enough power. Our new problem is when we try and tension the belt, the MDF ends just warp and we can't get the belt tight enough. And the belt ends up just slipping on the pulley and that's why we were seeing the crashes. So to fix this warping, I had the new ends cut out of six mil steel. 
Our other problem was the join where the shower curtain rails met the MDF was nowhere near rigid enough. And as a result, whenever the slider would move, the whole thing would just like wobble and walk its way around. So I thought it would be a great idea to make the rails out of steel as well. That way I could weld the whole thing together and it would be perfect with no drawbacks at all. Now, just a quick catch up for anyone that doesn't know much about welding, and Henry, please listen up here. Welding is a process where things get so hot that metal melts. Okay, cool. Glad everyone heard that. Let's get into it. Yeah, another subtle thing that was added or intentional, I would assume, is whenever it, it breaks once again, it's on beat. So it hits, the slider hits as soon as the beat hits. What? Simple effect, he just rotoscoped himself out here and then cropped it. As far as pacing goes, it stayed the same except for when he went into this classroom shot here and there are some subtle effects that's going on that are pretty interesting it seems like up here whoa in this whole scene here the background has film or noise over it but he doesn't on him and you'll really notice it in the next shot behind him there's a riser that uh, keeps going which is obviously building tension and stuff which gives it that up and down up and down so it's not just the same beat going over and over, which gets, you know, repetitive sometimes if you do it the wrong way. You'll really, really notice here, simply he just rotoscoped himself out here and then made the background and added the noise and blur and stuff like that. The noise isn't on him, it's on the background, which is a unique way I've seen put this together as far as like an effect goes. And you'll really notice whenever he leans here, you know, you got He's rotoscoped. <laughs> because of how long the slider now was, I wanted to add a truss so it could support its weight in the middle. Without any of the spores, it's very wobbly. Wait, look at that. Some some pretty cool shots going on here as far as like the the b-roll and stuff He's definitely doing some stuff with the camera and I've also noticed this might change But he likes to use very groovy styles of music it has a good bass line and stuff like that really gets uh, gets the groove on <laughs> Stop, hold on. Did he just say that nothing's straight anymore? Because that sort of sounds like the kind of thing that'll get. Oh, sorry, things like yes. Oh, this is pretty sick. Frame now finished, it's probably time to start thinking about where we want to take this slider when it's done and who we want to be in front of. I was testing out this like new up and coming app called Instagram. I doubt you guys have heard of it. Actually, I'll, I'll, I'll put a little sample on the screen just so you don't feel left out. But basically, I was scrolling through because that's what you do on the app, you scroll. And I came across this dancer who dances in puddles, which sounds kind of strange, but... When you see it, it's actually like super effective and it looks really cool. Now, I doubt you guys can see it because your eyes probably aren't as good as mine, but 600 kilometers in that direction is this like huge salt lake, which at this time of the year fills up with like a really thin layer of water. So it turns into essentially just like a giant puddle. And you'll probably see where I'm going with this. Imagine if we had the dancer who just loves going dancing on? puddles on this giant puddle and we had the camera slider there. How cool would that be? If you're asking me and you're not, this is very one-sided conversation, but that's the subject and that's the location. Whoa, wait a minute. It's a little bit off. You can see the background teeny tiny bit. You can really see it here with the, with the window. Hey. Continuing on. Subject, and that's the location that I think we need. So I've already sent that young dancer an email, and hopefully he gets back, but I will, I'll let you guys know, and I will let you get back to whatever you were doing before I rudely interrupted, and that's enough Instagram. I'm in Detroit with Khadija, like All right, we need the camera to be able to look around. So, 
I made this. Okay. Which means we now have three axes that we need to control in coordination, and the way All that right. we do it is really important. Have a look at this shot that we managed to get before the shower curtain rail slider broke. If you look really closely, you'll notice it sucks. Now, to be fair, it is looking extra dramatic here because on every change in acceleration, Whoa. the sensor inside of my camera is just <laughs> slamming against the side of the body, but it's still a good illustration of how poorly our motion paths are set up. But this problem is actually very fixable and the chances are you solve it almost every day. So let's do a fun little experiment. All right, we're here with Anae. Now, just quickly, Anae, you're here under your own will. Um. That's beside the point. Okay, so basically we're gonna start down here in the car and we're gonna come up around the corner at about 30 kilometers an hour. Once we reach this pole right here, we're gonna start braking until we come to a stop in this bay in front of us. We did two of these runs and came to a stop in the shortest amount of time on the first attempt. Which one felt more comfortable? The first one. Well, isn't that interesting? The shorter of the two braking zones was also the most comfortable. Now, I'm willing to bet you know why this is. And even if you don't, I reckon you'll still instinctively do it. In the second attempt, I just jammed my foot on the brakes. And this is the same kind of acceleration we were able to achieve with my motors constant acceleration. But as we saw, constant acceleration is very uncomfortable and it leaves the system really unsettled. Take a look at how much the car wobbles when it comes to a stop. If you were a camera, which one would you prefer more? Um, I think that's a hard question to ask. Because you're not a camera. Okay, I want to I want to break down before well, hold on. Okay. Yeah, I'll just I'll let this finish off and then I'll explain what I'm going to So then explain. what was different about the more comfortable first attempt? Well, I, like most drivers, gradually increased the braking pressure and then gradually decreased it before we stopped. And you can see how much more settled the car is at the end of this. So we just need to copy this same acceleration profile for the three axes of our slider and we should have beautiful motion. Oh, but if only it was that easy. I spent weeks in Arduino trying to work out how to give our acceleration curve a rate of change, but it was it was above me for sure. <laughs> However, in the depths of my research, I stumbled Perry across a really cool motion control program that lets you use an Arduino as an interface to be able to control up to eight motors. And all we need to do is plug the motors into our Arduino, the Arduino into the computer, and then inside of our motion control program, we just click here and here and look at that. Acceleration. Oh, okay. So the section is done for. These guys in Blender are having way too much fun. I mean, yeah, it's still keeping up the pace, doing the same stuff, you know, zoom in, kind of explaining different graphics and stuff that he's talking about. Nothing too crazy that we haven't seen already when it comes to effects or styles and, and stuff like that. But there is a specific effect that I do want to talk about, which is whenever he talked to the camera and he's kind of blurred out and then he stands up or moves away and it shows him farther away while he's still in the shot. And to simply put it, he showed the clip of him talking to the camera all blurred out or whatever. And he rotoscoped or masked around him and as he moved away, he just kept that blended. It also seems like he looped it back and forth so it's able to stay there the whole time. And then inside of our motion control program, we just click here and here and look at that. Acceleration curves to the third order, just like we saw. And that's a subtle trick with the voiceover, which I've seen, I've seen a couple times where he'll have the voiceover and then the voiceover will seamlessly go into the actual clip of him. And so you'll notice here, whenever he said, we'll just click, and then it cuts to the shot of him in real life saying here and here, and then he continues forward with that. Control program, we just click here and here and... Just very um, seamless transition into actual footage, and it, it works works pretty well. Or in my car before. How cool is that? And with that, we have everything we need to give the slider its first run. Button. Look, that one was on me. I did indeed press the wrong button, and as a result, that Henry now needs to drive all the way to the city to relaser cut that MDF and then come back up and put it all together. So while we wait for him to return... He did it once again. Man, I wonder if he's going to do this a lot. That, I think that's three times now. He's kind of cut the music and showed another crash and then added a voiceover to explain what he's got to fix now, which it does show progress and gives you a reason to stay and and see how he fixes it but it's pretty interesting as far as the editing goes how that they're so similar
And let's try and work out what camera we're going to use. The real Glambot uses this, which shoots in 4K at 1,000 frames per second, but costs 240,000 US dollars. We, on the other hand, are going to use this, which shoots in 4K at 1,000 frames per second, but only costs 17,000 US dollars. Now, I know hmm. how crazy prefacing that number with the word only sounds, but when you look at what it's capable of, that is pretty impressive. It's a proper big boy camera, but that means it comes with big boy responsibilities, like manual focus. Fortunately for us, DJI just released their brand new LiDAR autofocus system, and it essentially gives our cinema camera, which only has manual focus, the most OP autofocus you have ever seen. DJI very kindly lent me the system for a few weeks so that I could use it on the slider. Oh, we've got a sticker as well. I wonder if I have to return that. But honestly, this thing is handy for not even Whoa, wait, the hold on. Oh, we've got a sticker as well. I Oh, wow. Okay. That's pretty, uh, that's pretty, I didn't even realize. So he's got a hand cut out here with the videoing effect. Oh, wow. There's a lot more in depth in this than I just realized. So it looks like there's a car background, like it's in the back of a car. He took the video and rotoscoped him out and then lowered the highlights on it and kind of blended the edge of it and stuck it behind the phone, which is a cutout of a hand holding a phone, obviously. And then to seal it all off, he added a handheld effect over top of everything, which I would assume he had an adjustment layer, put it over top, and then put the handheld effect on it. Yeah, this uh, scene right here is a lot more from just watching. There's a lot more layers than I was expecting. But honestly, this thing is handy for not even just like video related things. Oh, yeah, I bet you were wondering how far away that tree is. 3.28 meters, no worries. The car over there, 9.1, not bad. How far are you away? 0 0.73. Back off. <clears throat> Sorry. You probably noticed that we are still missing our camera, and that's because despite the bargain that we found, it still costs a thousand dollars a day to hire, meaning I really have a maximum of one day's worth of use with this camera. So before I go and halve my net worth, I want to make sure that everything is working flawlessly. So let's go see how Henry got on reassembling the slider. Oh nice, looking good. Wait, hold on, is that all of the electronics balancing on a board, balancing on a bucket, balancing on a stool? Oh, God. Wow. All right. Well, that was pretty interesting. He added a subtle riser there while he's explaining before it actually happened. So you're kind of getting an understanding of, of what's about to happen because of uh, how it was positioned. And then it actually happens in, in the whole explosion and everything. <laughs> that was three weeks worth of work, but it will all be worth it. You just wait. Your brain is about to be blown. You are about to see the next thing, the beginning of a revelation. Well, that was underwhelming. Wait, hold on. Is beginning misspelled? Did they do that on purpose? Or is that just a... Hey, I've done it before and we all have our moments, but I just realized that. Interesting. Well, that was underwhelming. I mean, the vibrations are horrible. But I just don't get it. Why? 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 Well, welding is a process where things get so hot that metal melts. No, nothing that metal melts. Anymore. It's like very no, bold. Nothing what straight. are you going to do? I think I'm just going to go with the hoping it's not a problem technique. Well, I guess that uh, you guys are probably going to try and tell me that I missed a bunch of fairly sizable warning flags there. But I don't think it's worth playing the blame game because well, who does that help? The problem was the rails. Unfortunately, my horrific welding of the truss onto the rails had caused warping to a pretty severe extent. And this is what was causing all those bumps. I spent the next few weeks trying anything I could think of to try and fix the vibrations. But short of remaking the whole frame and being far more careful with my welding, nothing was gonna help. Really not wanting to rebuild the entire frame, it was time to take some fairly desperate action. Stabilization. I was trying to avoid using stabilization on this because it sort of felt like cheating. But being honest never got me anywhere. So stabilization it is. Run it! <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, that's pretty sick. But you got this scene here where you just changed the orientation of the word Y and just had it spinning and pop up at different moments. But it's black and white and he's doing some audio effects here and he's done it a few times where he's added risers and stuff like that to kind of break the tempo of the overall project. It's like very no, nothing What are you going to do? I think I'm just going to go with the hoping it's not a problem technique. Well. So yeah, he had a riser. He added a riser and then it cuts to silence, which usually happens 
after a riser. <laughs> The problem was the rails. Unfortunately, my horrific welding of the truss onto the rails had caused warping to a pretty severe extent. And this is what was causing all those bumps. And then you'll notice before the next track actually starts, he's got it very kind of echoey in the background and very low. And then it hits into the next section or what he's going to do, which gives it a subtle transition into that. All right, he's got to be doing this on purpose. He's got to be doing this on purpose at this point. Within just 1.6 meters of the gantry's travel, the slider is moving at its top speed of 24.5 kilometers an hour. It accelerates at 26.9 meters per second per second, meaning it would theoretically reach 100 kilometers an hour in just 1.03 seconds. But like none of that means anything unless the shot looks good. And we can't know if the shot looks good until I hire the camera. And I can't hire the camera until I hear back from the dancer, so. At this stage, I've been working on this project for seven months and I was approaching the what on earth am I doing with my life phase. So I decided that enough was enough and I was going to hire the camera for this coming weekend and one way or another, we were going to get this shot. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it for this Friday then. That would be great. Thank you. Done. With the camera now locked in and still no response from the dancer, time was running out. But I wasn't ready to quit just yet. I really wanted a dancer in this shot and there was still one way of contacting him that I hadn't yet tried. What is that yeah. way? I could tell it's it's uh, gonna start getting intense here because of the music and all that. You got the waves going in the background with the music. You might ask, well, it's, <laughs> it's Snapchat. I just sent him a photo. Realistically, I should have quit. Oh, I screen recorded the chat. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> no. Oh no, it said I, it said I screen recorded it twice. Oh, I've ruined everything. So I've dramatic. Ruined, oh, that's horrible. That's, I'm gonna stop screen recording at once. <laughs> oh my goodness, wow. Completely out of ideas. With only three days till the camera arrived and the added fear of now looking like a predator. <laughs> that just got so dramatic out of nowhere. <laughs> just showing waves crashing. I was running out of hope. But they say it's in your darkest hour that it's easiest to see the light. This is Holly, a super talented dancer who had her own dance competition on this weekend. So unfortunately, she couldn't do the dancing for us. But she was very kindly willing to try and teach me. Holly had created us a little dance routine that perfectly synced with the movements of the camera slider and took into account the fact that some of the footage was going to be slowed down. Yeah, really. <laughs> she even included my little dance move from earlier because she thought it was cool. So thank you, Holly. Thank you, Holly. Great. Thank you. But with that, the time had come to head home and finish packing up so we could leave the next morning. Hey, press it again and we'll stop it. It's been a big effort for all of us to get to this point. You guys watching as well. So I think we should spend this drive reflecting on on how it feels to have liked and subscribed. Now, obviously, if you haven't done that yet, you have to go and do it so you can partake in this exercise, but I'll tell you how I feel. I feel bloody lucky to have you guys on my team. Thank you. All right, we have made it to Lake Gerdin. Apparently out there, the salt is like 1.8 meters thick, which is wild, but very irrelevant for today because this lake is normally home to a lot of land speed records. But today we are attempting a very different speed record and that is the world's fastest camera slider. I mean, yeah, nothing too insane as far as the editing, but the pacing or just the overall feel here has definitely slowed down to become more of that cinematic uh i don't want to like overuse that word but that's the best thing i can think of right now but it gives it that very you know dramatic type of feeling a lot not as groovy as the start of it was which usually at the beginning of youtube videos you do want it to be a little bit more exciting and upbeat it's definitely slowed down a bit towards the end here now see the overall results. But 
but just as we were ready to start filming, I broke this magical black box. This little box's job is to burn off the huge amount of excess electricity that's created from the motor decelerating. Without it, we can only use about 20% of the maximum torque. There was nothing I could do to fix it, so we were just going to have to run the motor at a slower speed. I am actually really shocked that he didn't, I'm shocked that he didn't make that more dramatic than it was. Just the overall explanation, he could have really built that out with what he's done before that I've seen. I'm shocked that he didn't build it out to where like there was a dramatic hit or silence or something and he's like i broke the box and it i can't do anything without it. i'm surprised he didn't go that route he just kind of subtly snuck that in there in the voiceover and kind of explained it and this was so shattering it meant yeah. that the routine that holly and i had spent so long practicing now no longer worked so I was going to have to do what any good dancer would do, improvise. Yeah, that's pretty slow-mo. Remember, I'm not a good dancer, so I just sort of stuck to the one move that I knew. Guys, I think I messed up. Do you ever get so fixated on an idea that you just entirely neglect to consider if it still or ever even was relevant to what you were actually trying to achieve? Like, does the shot look cool? Kind of. Would it have looked cooler if everything went to plan? Probably. But didn't we set out to create a glam bot? I don't think we've demonstrated we did that. And that's really annoying because we put in so much work to get here. But what if that's the point of the video? What if the whole thing was to teach us that sometimes it's okay to not nail a shot? Sometimes it's okay to not deliver on a promise. In this case, maybe being close enough actually is good enough. Fine. Yep, that was sick. It's definitely, definitely, definitely gotten more dramatic towards the end here with the music and everything. And you'll notice he's, he broke the cutting and the pacing of it because it's overall slowed down. Let me show this, let me, let me show you here. So he's got like these zoom ins and zoom outs and he's talking relatively quick for the most part, and the tension is building up. And then he keeps in, he could have cut it out, but he keeps it intentionally and on purpose, him leaning back, nothing's being said, breathing in or, you know, whatever he did, taking a second and then saying, all right. And then he gets up and goes. In this case, maybe being close enough actually is good enough. Fine. And so you purposely leave that in to, to give it more of an authentic feeling. No, yeah, I mean, that was pretty sick. He definitely, uh, you know, delivered and he broke the pacing and it was a little bit, it was still sick, but like you said, it was a little bit underwhelming with the way it was color graded or the overall shot, even though it looked pretty cool in the ocean or, or wherever he was at. The fact that he explained on it and purposely made it feel like that and then slowed down and let it build up so he could really hit on the delivery of the overall shot and what he built. That was a really good, I really enjoyed the way he did that and made it. It really delivered on the impact of the, of the shot. 
and what he's trying to show here. That was my breakdown of, I made the world's second fastest camera slider by Henry Kidman. If you'd like to see me break down another video out on YouTube, you can click here to check it out. And enough of that. I will see you at the next edit.